Welcome back to Coffee and Kabbalah. Today we are doing the inner dimensions and the secrets of the month of ER, Taurus, and how we can tap into the incredible energies of ER um, and bring them into our life and maximize this month that we have. Uh, yeah. So ER is Taurus, it falls out, what's the, May from May 22nd to June 22nd or from April 22nd to May 22nd, I think. Okay. So the, when we learn about the, we go through Sefer Yitzira and we learn about all the energies of the month, the name of the month, um, which is ER, which we said comes from the word Arcadian name of light and also means Ziv, which also means light. We have the letter of the month. This month, it says Hashem created the letter, um, the month of ER through the letter Vav. Vav is a connecting letter. Whenever you have two people, Sarah and Shira, if I want to connect the two of you, I say Vav. V v also, it's a hook to hang things on and connect things with. Um, what is the connection of the month of ER? First of all, it's a time of connection, but it also connects the month before it with the month after it. It connects leaving Mitzrayim to receiving the Torah, um, and it, it it's like the hook between the two of them um, and the unifier. The zodiac sign of the month is Shor, which is a bull, um, Taurus, which is the, we learned that Nisan was the Sfira of Chesed, was the lamb, represents Chesed. Shor is the, represents Gvura. Also, Shor on the Kisei Kavod in the, on the, on the, um, Merkava of God, on the chariot of God above, and the vision of Yechezkel says that Shor was on the left side. So Shor represents Gura, which is interesting because we earlier said that um, Nisan is like falling in love with Hashem. Um, and then here it's that separation, that Nida period, this, or the engagement period of separation before that mar marriage and the wedding, which happens in the third month of um, Sivan, which is the Gemini and the twins, which is the month of Tiferet. So anyways, Nisan is Chesed, Iyar is Gvura, and Sivan is Tiferet, which is interesting because Tiferet is a combination, a balance. When you balance out your Chesed and your Gvura, your boundaries and your compa and your love, you're left with compassion, with being able to have a balance of both. And that's why Tiferet, which is Gem um, Sivan, which is Gemini, is like two is um, two twins because it's taking two and blending them both together and balancing them. Now, this class is going to be based on the idea that Kabbalistically, the months of Nisan, Ir, and Sivan, or Aries, Gemini, and uh, Aries, Taurus, and Gemini, are actually a trio, a cluster. They're clustered together, they're grouped together, and they have a lot of connect influence on one another. Um, so they're like a, they're a trio of months. We also see this earlier in other classes. We discussed how Yaakov and his brother Esav divided time between themselves and they divided the months. So these three months also were divided. Yaakov and Yaakov took dominion over Nisan, Ir, and Sivan. And then Esav took the next three months of um, Tammuz of Elul. Um, so that's one of the ways that the we see this division of the months. Also astrologically, they come in clusters. So what is the connection? How do we see this cluster of months, the trio of months of Nisan, Iyal, and Sivan? Um, so in one way, one of the ways that we see it is through the through that the Pasuk that we mentioned earlier, Mshir Lashirim, that Mashcheni, the time that we, we were taken out by Hashem, then Acharech and Arutza, rework on ourselves and refine our animal soul so that we are worthy of Vieni Amel Chadarav, which is the third stage. Mashcheni was Pesach, Hashem pulling us out of Egypt when we had nothing. Acharech and Arutza is Sfira Saomer, or is Iyal, which is us working on our two souls, our plural, um, both of our souls to refine ourselves so that we can get to the point of Vieni Amel Chadarav, which is in Shavuot or in Sivan, when we we are uniting with God and being one with God now that we've you know be become on that level we're ready to be in a union with Hashem so that's one of the models another beautiful model um, that the that, that I read once was the three months representing three different types of marriages there is a marriage that is one more thing about the clusters is that they're considered one two and three the months of um, Nisan is the first month Gemini is the second month, and Tiferet is the third month, so right of, of the year. In fact, it's brought down that it says that Hashem gave the to, the Torah in the third month to the Am Segula to the nation of three, and He brings something else down about three. So we're a three. Anyways, that's for next month. So the the idea of the one, two, and three is that there's a, the first type of marriage is a sheep marriage, an Aries marriage, a marriage where there's only one person in the marriage. It's described. It's when one of the 
it's when there's peace, um, like a sheep, it's very peaceful. But the reason it's peaceful is because one of them is always submitting to the other one. So one has no opinion or never voices their opinion, always agrees and submits to the other person. So it's a very calm, peaceful marriage, but one of them has no voice. So it's really a sheep following its master, following its leader, and it's a marriage of one. So although it might seem peaceful on the outside, there's really only one person in this relationship, the person who wears the pants, and the other person who follows along and agrees with whatever the other person tells them to do, and is a, without express, is obedient. Um, so that's not an ideal marriage, even though it might seem at first that it's peaceful. The second marriage is the opposite. It's a marriage of two people. It's two people. One is not a doormat. It's not a sheep that agrees with everything the other person says. They both have very strong opinions. This is two people clashing like bulls. That's the marriage of the Taurus. So that's more common, right? You see people fighting all the time and arguing. Whoever has the louder voice wins in that argument. So it's a marriage where there's two people, right? And, you know, we just work our best to butt heads and, and to balance out who wins every single time. Um, again, that's obviously not an ideal relationship. So what is the ideal? How do we find an ideal between these types of marriages? Do I, am I a doormat or do I say my opinion, but then we're clashing and fighting all the time? What do we do to keep the peace? So we learn that the balance and the ultimate marriage is a marriage of three. It's the marriage of, with Hashem in your marriage, and it's a marriage of the Gemini, the twins. In fact, there's another Pasuk in Shir Shirim where it's beautiful verse, Pasuk in Shir Shirim, where it says, Pischili achoti ani eshena veli bi'era. It's one of my favorite Pasukim. I am sleeping, but my heart is alive. Um, called Dodi Dofek. The voice of my beloved is knocking, and she says, Pischili, open up for me. Achoti, my, my sister, Rayati, achoti, my Rayati, my good friend, Yonati, am I dove? And then the highest level is, is tamati. Now tamati means my completion, my other half, like tam, my whole, my other half. But another reading, meaning of tamati is my twin, my tama, right? And tomim and tama. So the, um, why is twins completion? Because your twin completes you, your two halves of one. The highest level of love is level of twins. It's saying that I exist, and that's the, the answer, the balance to the sheep marriage, and to balancing of the sheep marriage, which is chesed. Like, I just, for the sake of peace, I don't wanna argue with you. You're, you're right, right? I'm just never saying my opinion, you know, whatever you say, either spouse. Then Shor is like, no, I don't wanna have no voice. I wanna have an opinion. I'm gonna always say my opinion if I feel that you're wrong. So where's the balance? The balance is having your own voice, having your own opinion, but recognizing that the other person completes me, like the tamati, that my twin, that's what the Gemini sign is, that I have my, um, there's me and there's you, but I can learn so much from you, from your difference of opinions, that you can complete me, that I, even though you might be different than me, even though you act differently, even though you might be a slob and I'm neat, or you're neat and I'm a slob and I'm cautious and you are always like taking risks and adventures, you can complete me. I can see the value of how you can make me whole. And I can see the value of making space for your opinion. And that's when you can live in harmony with another person. So yes, you have your opinions, but you can also see another person, be able to respect and see another side. Like Shira said that the Columbia person said, spoke about in the speech, that you can be able to listen to another person's opinion respect the other person, respect that they might have something of value. And even if you don't agree, just give them the respect that, you know, it's okay for other people to feel differently than you. And that's when you have that completion. And the ultimate is mamash twins. is when you say, you complete me. You might be so different than me, but we are puzzle pieces that fit together. And that's that marriage of three. There's like me and you, and then there's the us, how we can blend together, how we can complement one another, that eret, that harmony. Um, so that is the three types of marriages. Now this blends right into another model of these three months, a model of self-growth and self-development and very much connected to education, which was connected to the Parsha of Emor, where the main mitzvah is to educate through love and through lighting up those around us. So the education model is incredible. Um, and it's a psychological model. Maybe Aliza heard of this, because I never heard of this before. Um, it says that there's three stages of development in like your, in your independence. One is called the pre-personal stage. One is the next level is called the personal stage, and the next one is called the interpersonal stage or the transpersonal stage. Or in simpler words, I call it dependent, independent, and interdependent, in my words. But um, the, the psychology calls the pre-personal stage the stage of these three crucial stages of development. The first stage is infancy, or even from the womb, where a child is completely pre-personal, has no sense of self, is fully dependent on their parents or their caretakers to give them everything that they need. That's like a sheep, and that's how we were in Pesach. We were fully dependent on Hashem to just schlep us out of Mitzrayim, give us all of our needs, give us the man, right? We weren't doing anything. We weren't active participants. And this is the fully dependent stage, what I would call dependent, pre-personal, or whatever you want to call it. Now, this stage psychologically is super crucial for a child's healthy development. Later on in life, if a child didn't receive their needs, if they were in a neglectful home or a home where their parents couldn't give them all their needs or something happened, then later on in life, we can't really climb into the other levels of healthy attachment in, unless we have those early um, those, those early needs met. So we, I guess hopefully you can tell us that there's later things in life you can do to then give yourself that, to be able to nourish yourself and to receive, be a full receiver, be able to receive all your needs, to say, Hashem, you know, give me everything that I need so you can heal yourself if you've not receive that as a child but there are ways to you know have healthy attachment if you're aware of it later on in life 
once that attachment stage, that fully pre-personal stage ends, where the child really is just an extension of their parents, then the child begins to enter the personal stage or the dependent stage, which I think begins in toddler, even when they're a toddler is two and three, when they start to say, me, myself, I want to feed myself, only me, I'm dressing myself, I'm picking it, right? It starts there, what, two, right? It begins in toddler as a toddler, and it really peaks at adolescence. So this is the, really the adolescent stage. It's that adolescence wanting to be independent, wanting to be my own person, to be able to prove I'm no longer an extension of you. I am my own individual. I am different. I'm not just a, I'm not just an extension of you. And that's really the deeper reason of why teenagers, when they peak to this idea of this um, this um, developmental stage of dependence, they're coming out and saying like, I hate you. Everything. I'm not listening to you. They're rebellious. But underneath that is that need for them to say, I'm not just an extension of you. I'm my own person. I want to be my own individual. So we can understand that. And it's actually, although it's the most difficult stage for parents to deal with because your children is rebelling against you and, and everything you say they want to do the opposite, it's a crucial stage of development and it's a healthy stage of development and it means that your child is a healthy teenager experiencing the need to be independent and that's very good. The opposite is could be much worse if a child doesn't want to leave you and never wants to leave the house and only wants to only wants your opinion forever and never can figure out what they want for themselves and wants to be attached to you and live under your roof forever right so that's although it's a painful time for us for the teenager it's a natural healthy stage of development although it's like the animal soul we need to temper it and and, and it can often lead to selfishness as well because that need to like be my own individual can spill over into a lot of self-centered self-centeredness in the teenager and our job is to you know help the teenager guide that to help them the main thing i think we can do is help our teenagers understand that need and understand their need to be an individual and to be their own person and not to be an extension of me of you and I think when they can understand that drive of why they're feeling like everything you say to them they want to do the opposite and why they want to rebel against all adults in their life and why they want to be independent and not have to tell you when they're coming home and when you can maybe understand where that's coming from then when maybe when they can help understand that where they're coming from they're gonna be more aware of that and be like be like okay maybe like my mom, you know, parents are not trying to ruin my life. Maybe this is just a natural teenage feeling that like I need to push specifically from my parents. In fact, there's guidance from the Rebbe where I read where parents were dealing with difficult teenage children and they wanted to know how they could, what they could tell their children to be better. They're dealing and rebellious teens. And the Rebbe said, whatever you tell them, it cannot come from you because they're naturally wired that whatever you say, they're going to resist it. So it should come, the rabbi always said, never the parents, if you want your kids to do something, tell them the opposite, right? If you want them, to, they're gonna do the opposite of what you tell them. Find close friends to them and maybe they can influence them or bring it up with them and they'll be much more receptive because it's a natural thing that because they were an extension of you in that first stage of development, in the pre-personal stage, and now they want to assert their individuality and their independence. And this is the Taurus, the bull, that bullheadedness, like it's the image of like a bull is like an angry, rebellious teenager, stubborn, strong-minded. There's also a lot of koach in that. There's a lot of power and a lot of potential. They have so much potential and our job is to help them maybe direct that passion and that drive into positive things. Um, and so that's in our Jewish stage of development, in our historical stage of development as a nation, the birth and infancy in Nisan, we are birthing into a new nation. And Taurus and the month and the Sphere of Omer, which is represented by the bull and the shore and the Taurus, is our time to not just be a sheep that is a completely butzel like matzah, because we said matzah is not for the whole year, it's just for once a year. That's the foundation. But now we need to figure out who we are as an individual, because if we're not an individual, if we haven't figured out how we are separate, how we, who, are, we, who am I am an individual as a separate person, what am I, what is my relationship with God, I can't have a relationship with Hashem. I can't enter into that marriage unless I have a sense of self and identity. If you're a nobody, it's like before God made the world, where there was just angels, you know, like robots programmed to be, that's not a relationship. If you're in a relationship with a programmed robot to, to like those, all those futuristic movies of like AI robots, that's not a real relationship because there's no decision making, there's no individual to at the table. So um, ER was our time to become an individual, to be our own person, to develop that sense of self through the work of the Spheres Omer, through working on our midos, figuring out who I am, that figuring out my, what, what, what is my individual self, what I have to work on, becoming an individual so that I can now have a person, not just a flat matzah sheep that's just following my leader, but rather a relationship is not when you're following your leader like a sheep we said that wasn't the best relationship relationship is when i'm my own individual with my own feelings my own qualities my own uniqueness and then i can enter into that relationship so that's what taurus is as um as a nation um and as an avoda and what we're doing right now and in teenagehood it's that it's that that um 
I blanked out, I was gonna say something else about the teenage, the teenage need for like asserting their independence. And I was gonna say that even this teenage doesn't end by teenagehood, it goes well into adolescence. And many people continue the stage of figuring themselves out and finding themselves and who they are and as an individual well until at least 25. And sometimes there's adults in their 30s and 40s who still are on that path to individuality and there's nothing wrong with that. It might take people longer, maybe they had a harder time in their first stage and that's what's inhibiting them from moving on past the second stage. And it's a tough stage and I think that's why like the most curious, the people are the most curious about their personality types and taking personality tests online and reading all the books about the types and the astrology, that's my zodiac sign. That's that stage that develops mostly in that stage of like 20s, late, late teens and 20s because they're trying to figure out who am I as an individual in this world. Um, like I, I, I mentioned in a previous class that um, it's so important in our relationship with Hashem as well that we graduate from our relationship with Hashem that's I, I, because of my parents, for anyone who grew up Orthodox, um, to my own relationship with Hashem. Because we say Hashem has no, I love that quote, Hashem has no grandchildren. Your relationship with God is not through your parents. I, like I love it. You are Hashem's child. You have to find your own identity with God. You have to go, and that, sometimes that takes teens and it's hard for parents when we see our children figuring out their own way with God and it's so difficult for us to let go because we want them to have our relationship with God but they're not Hashem's grandchildren they have their own relationship with God and we need to let them figure that out let we can guide them we can tell them how it is for us we can give them chizok we can direct them we, if they come to us hopefully if we build that safety and trust with them that we respect them they will come to us for um for guidance but the best thing we can do is let them and guide them and let them develop and tell them how important it is and to tell them that it's so important that you have your relationship with Hashem that has nothing to do with me your connection to God we're cousins we're not you're not my grand right it's not through God we're all brothers of we're all children of Hashem right you're my sibling in this but I'm not there to I'm here as a sibling to you know be there for you but you, it's your relationship with Hashem and you have that time to explore that throughout life um, so that's what this crucial developmental stage is. And it's very important. And if a child doesn't have the chance to do this, if their parents are super controlling and don't let them have their own identity or figure out their own identity or they're afraid of losing their child or they only have one kid or they, you know, whatever trauma their parents have that make them hold on, then that child can't properly develop into the third healthiest stage of development until they've fully been able to express their individuality um, and express their individuality and figure out who they are as a person. And something I noticed was interesting was that... Um, like I realized that teenagers, at least when I was in my 20s, I remember like if I had an opinion and other people around me, like my family would disagree with me, I would like scream my opinion, like say it super loud to convince them all that I'm right and they're wrong. Like the students of Rabbi Akiva, right? And I think that the, the root of that is when you don't have your own, when you don't have a strong sense of who I am as an individual, when you don't feel, you don't, when you haven't yet developed your full self and know who I am, then you're, a very, you're like a Taurus, a bull. You need everyone else to think of your opinion because you're still figuring out that stage. And that's that loud, bull-like conqueror stage. Only as I matured did I realize that, you know, if once I know who my, once I know what my opinion is and I'm comfortable with my individual self, then I much less need to convince everyone else of my opinion. That usually comes from not being able to, not really knowing your full opinion. When you're, you see people are comfortable with themselves, when they're mature, when they feel like their opinion, it's okay for me to have my opinion and you'd have your opinion, that's they've reached that mature stage of like, I can have my opinion, you can have your opinion, it's okay. It's like the teenagers on campus who are still like, so, you know, they're like, you know, the adults, they'll say, you know, I have my opinion, but I don't have to like scream and like, you know, bash you because you have the different opinions. So I think that's one of the roots of that, um, when you don't feel strong in your individual self. And the third and final healthy stage of development is only once you've come, only once you've properly gone through and worked on the first and, and experienced the dependent stage, having someone else fully give you all your needs, like in Pesach, and then have the independent stage where you're figuring yourself out. And that's what Spiros Omer is, by the way. We could figure out, we're trying to figure out which Spiros I am, who I am, where I'm strongest in. We map out the Spiros. We say, like, you make, I have um, really cool pie charts that I, I want to do with you guys in a workshop where you map out, you say like, let's say my relationship with myself over here, which sphere am I strongest in? Am I kind? Am I more hard with myself? Um, do, am I, do I need a more gratitude? What, what, what area am I strongest in? What area do I want to work on the most? That's like self-awareness in my relationship with Hashem, in my relationship with my, my spouse, in my relationship with my close friends and my, my children. You make a map and you really try to be self-aware with throughout the spheros, figuring out who you are as an individual and where you can grow and where you can work on. Um, and that's that self-development that we go through. And then we're ready for the third stage, which is the interpersonal, or they call it transpersonal, I call it the interdependent um, stage where we have that healthy stage, like that marriage, where there is, I have my own individual self, 
And because I'm comfortable with that, and I also can respect that you also have your individual self, and that's that twin stage of development, that there's me and there's you, and I can make, see another person and make space for another person. And that's what we're trying to help our youth, adolescents, you know, maturity is, make, is really making space, seeing other people. It's when it's not only about me, I'm not full front and center, I can recognize that there's another opinion, that maybe my, that's when you're mature enough to realize that your mom may have been right all along, right? When finally you have, I like, I'm so confident, I know who I am, and now I can work towards moving myself aside because I have a strong sense of self and because I've had that, that basis of being nourished, now I can be aware of other people. I can make space for another person. I can hear another person. I can see the value of another person's opinion. I can respect them even though their opinion might be different than mine. And that's coexisting or that's that transpersonal stage, that um, interdependent stage where I can coexist with another person because I have my own identity. So it's me, that's that like Gemini fusion and wholeness. Um, I thought that model was so enlightening for our relationship with ourselves, our marriages, um, our children, marriage is such an avoda it takes like from like you know wanting for at least for us personally like from wanting my husband to like have my opinions on the world I, he always said like i'm like you want me to say your opinion in a deeper voice i'm like exactly i want you to like agree with me in all things in the world right from like needing for like feeling like angry i used to feel like upset that he feels so differently about things and like wanting to change him to like that long of Oda first accepting that he has his different opinions and he's even if they're wrong and they're horrible and I hate them it's okay he's allowed to have his different opinions and accept that he has those opinions and not trying to change them just accepting that that is your opinion that is such a big step to take that I accept that that is your opinion and then the highest level is like maybe I can learn something from your opinion even though I might not I don't want to change my opinion on my own self maybe I can learn something maybe I can even be open right it took years for even to be open let's say feminism right I'm like a blazing feminist right and my husband is not necessarily anti but he might just have thoughts and if they're like not in line with it I couldn't even hear him I'm like you're a horrible person for even thinking differently than me <laughs> and that was like you know that like not being able and once you're if you're able to really once I'm able to be more mature and be like confident be like that's my opinion he could have a different opinion that doesn't that doesn't like that's not the end of the world and hopefully get to that stage where I'm able to even listen to his opinion and say I don't agree with you but I, I see where you're coming from I see why you might think that way I see that maybe some people have that maybe that's that's a valid the high for me the highest level saying that's a valid opinion to have right that for him was huge and I was able to start saying that like you that's a valid I don't agree with you but that's a valid that's a valid perspective I, I, I see why you might think that way or I don't want to see why you have that but you're allowed to, you're entitled to have that opinion not just saying you're terrible or that's the worst opinion ever right so that was that stages of growth at least for us within our relationship and that really this model of like the three months really helped me um, understand that there's so much more to say about ER we'll just end off that ER one of the acronyms for ER is um, oh, there's too much <laughs> is Ani Hashem Rofecha um, ER, because the Aleph is Ani, the Yod Yod is Hashem's name, Hashem. Lofecha, I am Hashem, your healer. ER is the month where we realize that all healing comes from Hashem. It's a month when healing can happen in our bodies and in our souls. It's the best month for realizing that even though Hashem sent doctors heal us and Hashem created those that wants us to go to doctors and listen to advice to doctors, the true source of healing is Hashem. And we tap into that source of healing in ER. Hashem reveals that to us more and allows us to tap into that and go straight to the source of not just healing the symptoms, what we're dealing with, but actually going to the source and saying, Hashem, you can heal anybody. And in fact, ER, one thing I didn't say is the eighth month of the year. And the eighth bracha in Shmon Esrei is the bracha of Rofe Cholim. We're also tapping into the power seven is nature, so healing through nature. But we're tapping in ER to the level of eight, the month of eight, of healing through a level above nature. Healing from not just natural limits, but like following what the doctors say, but much tapping that Hashem in one moment, like my mother-in-law, who was supposed to die when she was a few months old, who fell into boiling water and said she's going to die within crazy amount of time she was healed she has no scars till today her organs they said were fried she would never have kids and Hashem could skip all the steps from Amayla Minateva and Baruch Hashem she has 16 healthy oh, ch ch 16 children um, with the with the, beyond the doctor's say so we can try and have that Amuna in this month and open ourselves up to Hashem's healing one more healing connection this month is that the Man began at ER that on the, the, ma the Matzah and the food that they took out of Egypt lasted 30 days and in the middle of ER is when the Man began to fall and the man provided healing. And I heard this cool teaching because we're saying about the, dip, the healing is really like the vav. We said aligns. The vav is about alignment and about connecting. And when we're connected with our body and our neshama, because we're working on our neshama and our physical healing, that's when we have alignment. That's when we have true healing. Because true healing is really about connecting the body and the soul, the two souls, right? And so there's a, the, one of the, the Rebnei Shaskar says that most illnesses happen from eating food that is not good for our bodies. From, and the man rectified that because the man, all of the nourishment from the man was, all the food that they ate from the man was nourishing for their bodies. There was no waste. They didn't go to the bathroom. Going to the bathroom is like also the, by the way, the organ of this month is the kidney. And if I'm not mistaken, the kidney is what like sorts out the nutrition. 
you know, right? It, it, it like it decides what to go to your body and what to go to waste, right? It, it like it filters that. Um, and so the man, they didn't need that. They probably need kidneys because all the food was sent. I mean, maybe they did to send it, but all of the food was absorbed by their body and was nutritious to their body and they had no bathroom. And so it's, it's, it's yeah, I, I, I go on in this about like food and like really only since they started injecting hormones and different things into foods that we start to have new diseases that didn't exist before. So I guess it's the, and we learned that because the man began ER, we have this power of healing that the man gave us and also awareness of what we put in our bodies and trying to be intentional that we put in our bodies should be nourished as nourishing for us and least devoid of you know things that our bodies can reject um, to reach out healing so we have this time to work on our own healing but also to tap into healing from Hashem because at the end of the day Hashem decides everything and Hashem has the power to heal everybody and to protect everybody um, and we'll end off here although there's so much more to say I bless all of us with healing in our bodies and our neshama um, and when we heal our spheros and work on our inner core and on our attachments we also heal our body because our body you know, our body absorbs our feelings. And when we heal our body, we also absorb our, heal our soul. Um, so we should all have health in all areas. All of our children should come home safely from Gaza. We should trust in Hashem that Hashem will bring your child home safe in the schluss of this learning. Um, Avram Asher, Ben Sarah, you should have a safe return, healthy, safe return for him and all of Am Yisrael and Kali Yisrael. Love you all. Thanks for joining. Share this video if you liked it. And feel free to sponsor a future show.